Just ahead on CTV News tonight, it's the first day of early voting. We're at the polls. Plus, students at the University of Maryland stage a sit-in to protest the war in Gaza. The sit-in here at the University of Maryland continues. I'm Katera Jones. I will have more details on what these students are demanding from the university coming up on CTV News. And PGCPS seniors gathered at Bay Sox for College and Career Day. CTV News starts now. Good evening, I'm Gina Barti. And I'm Mariah Jalad with a CTV News update. Well, it's a big day here in Maryland as voters head to the polls for the first day of early voting. There are many races on the ballot, all of it leading up to the no November elections. Byron Scott has our story. Take a look behind me here. You see the long line of campaign signs here. We were at the Wayne K. Curry Sports and Learning Center, one of 11 centers in the county open today for early voting. The lines were short this morning at the Wayne K. Curry Sports and Learning Center. According to the Board of Elections, many voters are opting for mail-in ballots, yet many are still heading to the polls in person, like Kevin Alexander. I like to get my vote in without having a lot of crowd to stand in and get through. The center was littered with campaign signs, signs for congressional candidates known and not so well known, school board candidates, and those seeking a judgeship in Prince George's County. Uh, and after a lot of work. And while there are many races on the ballot, all eyes are on the county executive versus the congressman. Well, the candidate I picked was David Trone. Also, Brooke is uh, the one I think is going to be doing the best job. The winner of that race will face former Governor Larry Hogan in November in what many are calling a fight for control of the U.S. Senate. I think it's going to be a little tough because he seemed to be a little more of a bipartisan with certain issues. He, he was willing to kind of go against the grain with uh, Trump on some issues, so who knows. As for issues drawing voters to the polls, people are concerned about crime, education, and the direction of the country. What's at stake here this campaign? Oh, everything, uh, women's rights, uh, 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 employment for blacks, uh, education for kids, uh, common sense laws. The uh, main thing is birth control. You know, I, I just think every woman has the right to have their own control over their body. Early voting goes through May 9th. Polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. In Landover, Byron Scott, CTV News. Maryland's primary takes place May 14th. And a fifth victim of the Baltimore Key Bridge collapse is recovered from the Patapsco River. Unified Command announced that 49-year-old Miguel Luna was found in one of the missing construction trucks that was on the bridge when the container ship Dolly crashed into it in March. Luna was one of the six construction workers killed in the collapse. One is still missing. And the ship Dolly is scheduled to be removed from the river by May 10th, according to officials from the Port of Baltimore. Parts of the bridge currently sit on top of the ship. So far, 3,300 tons of debris have been removed from the river. Officials say the Dolly's removal from the river should give crews better access to areas they believe the sixth victim could be in and enable a larger channel to be opened for ships to return to the port. And state officials say rebuilding the Key Bridge will have a price tag of nearly $2 billion. This estimate comes as Maryland is looking to get funding for the bridge from the Federal Emergency Relief Fund. A timeline for the rebuild process sets the new bridge's completion in fall 2028. A Fort Washington man has been convicted of second-degree murder. The incident took place in July of 2022 in Capitol Heights when 31-year-old James Johnson was shot in the head while sitting in his car. 30-year-old Taj Yelverton shot multiple rounds at Johnson's vehicle, and he was pronounced dead at the scene. Yelverton will be sentenced on August 2nd. College students nationwide are lending their voices to support the people of Palestine. Young people are also calling on their institutions of higher learning to do more. CTV's Katera Jones was at the University of Maryland on Wednesday and has more on this story. 
Students here at the University of Maryland continue to gather right across from the administration building in support of Palestine. The students are calling on the university to support a ceasefire in Gaza. Chanting in unison, dozens of students participate in a sit-in on McClellan Mall Wednesday afternoon. The scholars are demanding that UMD divest from military companies and contractors that support the illegal occupation of Palestine. We really want to be loud with our voices and the fact that we're paying them like a lot of money for our tuition. Um, it's really important for them to hear us because we go to the school, we're students here. This movement, like so many others before it, has been shared on social media. Sophomore Amani Jamil took to the Threads app to express her feelings on the Israeli and Palestine conflict. So I feel like just so many people try to like turn a blind eye to it just because it because obviously it's happening like across the world so they think it's not their problem but in reality it affects so all of us honestly. The group called Students for Justice in Palestine at the University of Maryland organized the sit-in. However, college students across the country have been protesting for days, demanding their universities to take action. Every university in Gaza has been destroyed by Israel's airstrikes, and it's kind of crazy to be at a university that has all these connections to the companies that are profiting from that. It, I don't think that's right. Governor Westmore is still scheduled to speak at the university's May 20th commencement. No word yet if the governor will address the concerns raised by students here on campus. Katara Jones, CTV News. In other news, the county animal shelter is once again accepting owner surrenders. In April, the shelter temporarily suspended pet owners from dropping off dogs to, the re to be relocated due to overcrowding. During the suspension, the facility underwent a deep cleaning to reduce the risk of needing to euthanize animals due to poor shelter conditions. While the facility has resumed accepting owner surrenders, they say that you should only consider bringing your pet to the shelter as a last resort. And you're watching CTV News after the break. Details on several skimming devices that were found throughout the county. We'll tell you what to watch out for back in a moment. If alcohol builds a wall around you, that doesn't let you see where you're going. That keeps you feeling isolated and alone. That makes you feel hopeless. Know this. We are here to help if you want us to. It's never too early or too late to ask for help with a drinking problem. Alcoholics Anonymous, there is a way out. For more information, visit aa.org and download the Meeting Guide app. Well, we have a consumer alert for you this evening. Police have found 10 credit card skimmers at convenience stores in the county over the past few weeks, and they say shoppers need to keep an eye out. They found the latest device yesterday morning. Investigators say that these typically target stores in high traffic areas. It's made to look exactly like the actual point of sale machine and fits like a glove on top of it, usually with a swipe of your credit card. It allows the payment to go through so, the, so that the business will get paid, but in the process, it's also capturing your private information. Observe the machine, what you're going to use before you even insert your card. You insert your chip um, and it doesn't function and the system forces you to swipe. We believe that that's an indicator. I guess you can't shop anywhere now safe. Detectives say if you're out shopping and you find a skimmer, leave it there and let the store know so they can call police.
And Governor Wes Moore signs a number of bills aiming to solve the ongoing affordable housing shortage in the state. One of those measures is House Bill 2, which allows local jurisdictions to impose higher taxes on vacant buildings or lots. The goal of the legislation is to reduce the number of properties that sit vacant for years without any plans to develop them into usable spaces. In the midst of a housing crisis, we have a number of vacant homes. And it's one of these perplexing challenges that I'm so thrilled to work with uh, all of the leaders across the state to figure out how do we increase supply? How do we take vacant homes and put them back on the roll so that we have uh, uh, affordable and great um, homes available for all? And House Bill 2 will take effect on June 1st. A 63-year-old man will receive $3.1 million from the state after spending 31 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. In 1987, a then 25-year-old Gary Washington was convicted of fatally shooting 17-year-old Fareem Ali during a drug dispute. He was sentenced to life in prison plus 20 years. Yesterday at the Board of Public Works meeting, Governor Westmore apologized to Washington and his family. A judge also awarded him $90,000 in housing benefits. And seniors from Prince George's County Schools came together today to celebrate their next steps. It was College and Career Decision Day for the district at the Bowie Baysox Stadium. Graduating seniors celebrated completing their high school educations and moving on to colleges, universities, or their future careers. Students mingled with their fellow PGCPS peers and looked back on their journeys through high school. We're celebrating graduating, you know, and finally making it out of PG County Public Schools. Uh, it's a really exciting day because, you know, it's a, it's a day that we all never think is going to come. High school is never going to end, but, you know, it's here. I'm most excited to start a new life, make new friends, and try to start a new chapter in my life. More than 3,000 students were at the celebration. Congratulations and good luck. Ooh, good luck to them, huh? <laughs> I know, an exciting them. time in their lives. Yeah. And you're watching CTV News. Simon Bugs is here to talk about some high school baseball action. That's right, guys. I shot some great games yesterday. I can't wait for you to see. Great. Hey there, sports fans. They're coming right up. Some highlights from the Wise versus Suitland and International School at Largo versus Fairmont baseball games that took place yesterday. Don't go anywhere. I'm Isai Morales. As an actor, I've played many roles, but right now I'm speaking to you as a proud Hispanic American. You know, we need to protect ourselves from lung cancer. It's a leading cause of cancer death among Hispanic men and women. Growing up, I would hide my mother's cigarettes. Even as a child, I knew that smoking can cause cancer. So can just being around someone who smokes. But that isn't the only thing that causes this disease. Environmental factors like air pollution, chemicals, and even radon can also cause lung cancer. That's why we need to be better advocates for ourselves and our loved ones. If you're at risk, no matter your citizenship status, get screened for lung cancer. To learn more, speak with a healthcare professional or visit this website. Don't let the fear of lung cancer get in your way. Early detection is key. It could save your life. What's up, everybody? We begin your Thursday sports page with some highlights from the world of high school baseball. The Wise High School baseball team took the dominant yesterday against Suitland. Beginning with the first inning, the Rams were able to strike first and get their first run of the afternoon thanks to this single hit by number 14 for Suitland that resulted in a run by catcher, pitcher, and infielder Jaden Thompson Kelly. And shortly after, the Rams recorded another RBI thanks to this hit by another Rams player to go up 2-0 on the Pumas. And the Rams will score one more run and Wise was now down 3-0 going into their first offensive possession of the ball game. The Pumas offense will waste no time getting their first run of the game as catcher and first baseman Taylor Brown had a big hit to left field that allowed infielder Amari Swinton to run all the way to home plate. 
Fast forward to later in the game, right fielder and first baseman Cameron Colfer made a nice play as well as this hit resulted in two more runs for the Pumas courtesy of infielder and pitcher Ray Hicks and catcher and outfielder Joshua Johnson. And while the game was close for a little while, Wise eventually pulled away as the matchup went on and they took down Suitland 24-14. to Meantime, over in Largo, the international school matched up against Fairmont Heights. The Lions were down 11-8 to going into the bottom of the fourth inning, but soon closed the gap even more as number four for the Lions recorded an RBI to now make the score 11-9. But in the fifth inning, the Hornets added another run to their total as the Lions threw a bad pitch and Dewan out to Williams was able to get to home plate just in the nick of time. And not too long after that, the Hornets took advantage of another defensive lapse by the Lions as the catcher failed to secure the ball, allowing outfielder Anthony Proctor to score another run for his team. The Hornets offense continued to make plays as the game went on and in the end, they took down the Lions 19-12. Sticking with high school baseball, Bowie took down Northwestern 16-5, High Point won a low-scoring game against Duval 2-1, and finally, Eleanor Roosevelt cruised the victory as they took down Bladensburg 23-1. Switching gears to college basketball, the UMD women's basketball team has added multiple new players from the transfer, port from the transfer portal with the hopes of making some noise next season. Guard and Maryland native Salem Poffin Barger from Arkansas, point guard Sarah Tibiasu from VCU, and Kayleen Smichael out of Rutgers are just some of the newest Lady Terps. And with this new combination of transfer and returning players, head coach Brenda Fries touched on how big and athletic this 2025 Lady Terps team will be. We're going to get to be able to get back to playing how um maryland basketball looks you know our standard you know the you know was hit with you know lack of depth and and size and athleticism last year no you know can't say enough about that team though and you know what they did to try to you know get us our 14th and straight ncaa tournament um but yeah you know we're going to be able to get back and you know get out in transition we're going to have size and rebounding we've really taken a hit in our rebounding uh, we're going to be a lot more athletic to be able to defend the way we want to defend. And um, we won't have players, you know, conserving possessions. And that wraps up your Thursday sports page. So, Simon, it looks like that's a big group of new Lady Terps. The coach seems to think they're promising. Who stands out to you? Well, guys, to me, if I had to say one player that stood out, I would say, um, as I mentioned before, um, Maryland native Maryland up. Uh, uh, Sailor Poffenbarger, she definitely, like Coach Free says, they needed some help in the rebounding area, and I definitely think she provides that. She's definitely a, a big, a big guard. She's six two, Ooh. and while she was, yeah, she, yeah, definitely uh, very tall. And while she was at Arkansas, she um, this past season, she broke the the single season defensive rebounding record for them. She recorded two hundred and eighty three, and on the season alone, she averaged eleven rebounds. So she'll definitely help them in the rebounding department. And I'm definitely looking forward to see what her and the rest of the transfers will do this season for the Terps. Great. This new portal thing is is so they they just kind of they don't even have to tell their coaches they're looking to transfer. I think I, I think I do think they do have to give them a um, a heads up just so they. Um, are prepared so they don't it doesn't come as a complete shock as to yeah. where they're going but yeah they can transfer for any reason whether it be nil want to get more opportunities whatever the case may be great thanks so much Simon. no problem and let's get a quick check on our three-day weather forecast tonight will be mostly clear and cool as we wrap up the hottest day of the year so far friday will be mostly sunny with a high of 77 and a low of 53 saturday we'll see a high of 72 and a low of 57 with a chance of showers that might cool us down a little bit sunday showers are expected too and we'll have a high of 71 just a little bit i think and now our community calendar this saturday may 4th prince george's county is hosting a household hazardous waste and electronics recycling event. Residents can bring items like motor oil, batteries, pesticides, and old electronics. The event takes place at Surrattsville High School from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. For more information on the event and upcoming recycling days, contact 301-883-4748. And that wraps up our CTV News Update. I'm Mariah Jalad. And I'm Gina Barti. Join us again tomorrow for more news. Have a great evening. Good night. Good night.